Howdy. How's everybody out there in YouTube land today? I hope this finds you well uh, and good spirits and spring on the way and all that kind of good thing. Surely, goodness and mercy, it's not too far behind because calendar is pointing us right at spring. <laughs> Can't wait. What we're going to do today is we're going to be stenciling this welcome sign. And I've had some questions about stenciling, so I'm going to cover this again for you. Make sure that everybody understands how this works. Now, you can use whatever kind of wood that you can get your hands on. What I like is, is I like the distressed look signs. Um, you can go with crafts, craft blank wood, whatever you want to use. Um, but you can get this, uh, this, this uh, pallet wood on the cheap. This is just recycled, refurbished pallet wood where they've cut pallets up. And there's a lot of different places that you can order this from. Or if you have a pallet place near you, like I do, you can get it right from the pallet place. But uh, these are 12 inches wide and they'll vary in, in width depending upon the board that was cut. Now, this particular one, uh, if I measure it up with a with stick, it says here that this end is five inches now sometimes i have them three and sometimes five. i mean you get whatever you get you just order a, a lot of them and then you fit the stencils to them however that goes now let's talk about stencils for a minute with stencils um you can get them all different sizes shapes whatever uh, i've got a whole batch of these things different sayings on different ones so they fit different sizes of wood and all that kind of thing. Uh, this particular one says welcome on it. And it's big scrolly letters. You can get them with different fonts. <clears throat> and I, with this palette wood, I don't do anything to the wood. I do not stain it. I do not mess with it. I want it to look as natural as possible because that's what I'm after is a rustic piece. If you want to paint them, you can, you can paint yours. Um, let that dry before you stencil. Uh, you want to make sure it's good and dry before you try to stencil on it. And with when you don't put anything on them, then you just go ahead and stencil. Now, I, these are plastic stencils. After you have used it, you know, put, put your design on. You can clean them if you want to, but be real careful because even though they're plastic, you can warp them, uh, you, you know, because the lettering... Say so here how the plastic comes up. If you can make that out, you know, the plastic come right up off of that. Um, and, you know, you can bend that up and, and all that, and then it won't lay flat the next time. Uh, so I have a tendency not to clean mine. Uh, if you have not cleaned it, you want to take a look at it and make sure that there is no paint residue around any of your design elements on it that's going to inhibit your paint from going onto the wood when you lay your paint in. Um, but paint being on top of the plastic is not going to harm your stencil whatsoever. I use frog tape on the edges of mine. I get them just as flat as they'll possibly go on the wood. And then I, I put the frog tape to the ends. You can tape the top and bottom too, if you're so inclined. The thing of it is, you're not going to be swirling your brush around on your design. You're going to be tapping it up and down on your design. That's one of the key elements to stenciling. If you go to swirling it on your design, you're going to be pushing paint up underneath the plastic. And that is going to make your design look all fuzzy. It's going to make it look um, not neat anymore. Um, and you want nice, crisp lettering on your stencil piece. So we've covered the stencils. Now, oh, storing your stencils. Once it's dry, which doesn't take very long because you're not using a whole lot of paint here with this, then you can hang these up. I put mine on hangers with clothespins, hang them up in the closet and just let them hang there until next time I want to use them. Um, so they're easy to store if you've got extra closet space or you could use a, um, if you got a, an area uh, in a cupboard or something, you can always use one of those uh, tension rods, curtain rods and hang them on that. Um, different ways that you can store them. Use um, shower curtain rings with a piece of wire, you know, and, and hang them up that way. Uh, di all different kinds of ideas for hanging up your stencils. 
when you put the tape on, make sure you do not get the tape over top of any of the openings that you're going to be wanting to put paint on. And you can use any kind of paint you want to use. I'm using just cheap acrylic paint. This is apple barrel paint that I get up to the Walmart. Um, you don't have to use fancy paint in order to stencil. And you don't use much paint when you stencil either. That's another misnomer, is people think that they have to really lay the paint to it. No, you don't. Just a dab will do you. Now, I'm going to move this camera here once I get this paint tapped off of here and show you that uh, I'm not using much paint at all. Ours may be, there's maybe a half a teaspoon of paint, if that, down there, and most of that's going to get pitched. And let me wipe off this palette knife that I just used to take it out of the jar with. Keep my tools clean. And set that back. Now, move this camera. Okay, there's just, just a little dab of paint there on that. Okay. Now, move the board up just a little bit here so you can see. I take my brush. Now, this is a stencil brush. It's flat on the end. It reminds you of a makeup brush, but the bristles are stiffer than a makeup brush. You want to make sure that your brush doesn't have a bunch of fuzzies, all, you know, fluttered out all over it. Uh, it needs to be pretty flat and flat on the bottom. You take your brush. You go straight down into the paint. Put it right down on the paint. Then you pull your brush back up off of the paint. Then you're going to take a paper towel and you're going to take about all that paint off of that brush. <laughs> See, you want a dry brush. See how here on the edges where I'm going around, there's hardly any paint on that brush at all. Then all you're going to do is you're going to tap that brush up and down on your design over the openings in that plastic where you want that paint to go. And I just tap back and forth over it until I see that the paint is going into that opening. You do not swirl your brush. You do not swish your brush. Brush is tapped up and down on the design. And that puts the paint to the wood. And I keep going until I'm not getting any more paint off of that brush. Tapping it up and down. I hold my board still so it didn't moving around all over my table. You can clamp them down if you want to to keep them still. But you see how it gets lighter and lighter as we go out on this design because we're using all the paint up on that brush. Now I need a little bit more because I can see in here that my letters are not getting dark enough to suit me. So I'm going to dip my brush again and I'm going to tap about all that paint off of there until it's hardly coming off on the paper towels at all. Then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to start tapping it again up and down over top of my lettering. Just straight up and down. And you can go over it as many times as you would like to. I find that as long as the um, design is covered on the wood, that I don't see a bunch of light places in my openings on my stencil, that it's sufficient. up and down. Do not swirl it. Okay. It looks like it's covered to me. Now, lay the brush down to one side. I take a hold of my tape. Now, th that's why I like this frog tape so good because it sticks to the wood without um, being too sticky. You know, it's easy to peel up. So I get a hold of the ends of it. And I go straight up with it, pulling it off of the wood and up like that. Then I take the tape off of my 
stencil. And I lay my stencil off to one side so it can dry. And there is my stencil piece that says welcome on it. And I've already shown you a video where you'll know how to put the um, sawtooth hangers to the back of them. And now this piece, this is pretty much dry at this point. It's ready for Krylon. So I can take this. I don't do that in here. I've got birds in this room and you can't be using that kind of stuff with fumes around the birds. So I take this to the back of the house to the utility room where I'll shoot it with Krylon. And uh, but I use the gloss triple thick on it, but just, you know, one spritz across it uh, just to cover it. And I'm not trying to, you know, put a big old glossy finish on it or anything. I'm just trying to protect the paint so the paint does not get scratched up on it. And uh, then it doesn't take very long for that to dry. As soon as that's dry, then I can put the sawtooth hanger to the back of it and that piece is done. That's how easy this is. So I hope that answered any questions you have. If you still have questions, let me know and uh, I'll try to get them answered for you. And with all that, check out my Patreon, check out my uh, Etsy store. I've got a lot of stuff going up on Etsy this week. And uh, check out my Instagram, check out my Twitter. Um, all the URLs to all this stuff's in the description of the video. I'm over on Twitch too. I do videos over there. Uh, you can see a lot of cool stuff that I've done there. And um, I guess there's only one thing left to say, and that's Brenda's Cracky. Be like Brenda. Bye.